Hello, dear friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, be with all those who have been sincere, those who have been seeking to live in truth, so that then they may understand the will of God for their life. Praise God. We have been speaking about, we've been meditating on this letter from Peter, this epistle of First Peter chapter 5 especially. And we've, we've been speaking about the humiliations that he speaks about. He tells us to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. And then he says, casting all your cares upon him. We spoke about being sober, that we have to be sober, meaning humble, balanced, simple. Jesus was simple. Jesus is our role model. He is the role model to every human being. Whoever mirrors after the Lord Jesus, for sure, will be blessed here in this world and above all in eternity. I've been observing many people who have been weakened. They are weakened due to their lack of knowledge of truth. Many people say, Oh, Bishop, what do I have to do to receive the Holy Spirit? I am not living sin anymore. I already left my sinful life behind. I'm living for God. And I still haven't received the Holy Spirit. What is lacking in me? This is the question of the majority of people. What is lacking for me to receive the Holy Spirit that I still haven't received? Pay attention. I would like to make it very clear because we are soon going to have the pyjama prayer vigil, very soon. And I want you to prepare yourself for that so that you don't participate in this vigil as a sacrifice at 3 a.m. and so on, the best time to be asleep, and you are there praying, seeking the Holy Spirit, and then it happens that nothing happens. Nothing happens. No, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to think that just by participating in this vigil, you will receive the Holy Spirit. No, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit when you have a project for your life. You have a project. I want to serve God. This is the project. I want to do the will of my God. I want to reflect the image. I want to bear the image of God which Adam had before sin. What do I need to do? How can I bear the image of God in this world that is so filthy, so dirty, so unfair, so cruel, so evil? How? How? What do I need to do? Very well. That's what I'd like to talk to you about. Dear friends, the first thing in order for a person to receive, to be ready to receive the Holy Spirit is for them to be free. They have to be free. Free. They have to be delivered. But delivered from what? I have no demons in me, Bishop. I, 
I don't have any addictions. I'm free. I'm in the church. I'm a servant of God. When we speak about being free, it's the freedom from lies. Did you know that? See that the Apostle Peter, he had experiences. He had experience. He said to Jesus, O oh Lord, in no way everyone can abandon you, but I will not abandon you. And Jesus said, listen, today still you deny me three times before the rooster crows. Before the rooster crows. And Peter indeed denied Jesus. There was another time when Jesus spoke or asked the disciples, asking them, Who do you think I am? Then some would say, Oh, you are John the Baptist, or you are the prophet Elijah, and so on. You are the prophet Elijah that was meant to come. I mean, who do you think I am? Then Peter, who was very bold, very bold, he was bold indeed. He said, you are the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, Simon Peter, because neither flesh or blood revealed this to you, but the Spirit of God, my Father who is in heaven. So Peter was very excited. He thought he was special. That's it. He, he thought he was special because he was excelling amongst the apostles. But right after... Later on, a few hours went by. What happened? Jesus said to him, to the disciples, Listen, I, it's necessary that the Son of Man, that I will go to Jerusalem, and there I will be arrested, judged, condemned, etc., etc., etc. Excuse me. And I will die. But I will resurrect. Then Peter, calling Jesus aside, thinking that he was a leader of the other disciples, he called Jesus to the side and said, O oh Lord, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go there. Don't do that. Then Jesus detected what? Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan because you are not mindful of the things of the Spirit. Get behind me. I mean, in the same way that Peter, a few moments, a few hours back, had said, you are the Son of God, and he had the revelation of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus was the Son of God, right after Peter falls into the mistake of calling Jesus aside and advising him not to go up to Jerusalem because he was going to die. Well, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, which means in order for a person to be able to truly be possessed by the truth, which is the Holy Spirit, they need to be free from lies. And pay attention to how it teaches this here. The text says, Peter saying, The devil, your adversary, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This is very strong. And the devil has been devouring many people. But why? You know that the devil is a lie. He's the father of lies. He is the creator of lies. The devil is the creator, the father of lies. 
and the father of lies has been devouring many good people because these good people, many good people, were not free. They were not delivered from lies, from their little lies, from their pretense, from their wrong lifestyle. So the devil prevails. So pay attention. The devil only prevails in the lives of those who live in lies, in sin. Once a person is free from sin, forgiven, washed by the blood of Jesus, and living in truth, and embracing this truth, even if they suffer because of this truth, this person overcomes the devil. They receive the Holy Spirit. But if they give in to the advantages that come with lies in this world, then they become servants, hostages of the devil. Therefore, dear friends, to make this clearer, to translate this to you, if you want the Holy Spirit, firstly, you have to receive your deliverance. You have to be free from lies. Little lies and big lies, any sort of lies. Half truth is half a lie. It means half a lie. So you have to be free from the lies that you are used to practice, to say that it's normal for those who live in this world already, those who belong to this world. Those who belong to this world, obviously, are hostages of this world, the kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of the devil is the kingdom of lies, the kingdom of deceit. It's the kingdom of easy ways to achieve, to conquer things quickly, to be rich overnight. However, it costs them the truth. They have to lie and pretend. So when a person wants to receive the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of truth, God is the Father of truth. In order for a person to have the Spirit of God, they have to be free from lies. Because lies are from the devil. If the person lies, if the person makes use of lies, however small these lies are, they are making use of the tools, of the weapons of Satan. How can a person who makes use of lies receive the spirit of truth? It's not possible. That's why Jesus said, if you remain in my word, Truly, you shall be my disciples, which means to remain in the word of God is for you to walk in truth every day, today, tomorrow, after tomorrow. It's not just today. It's not just today so that today you can receive the Holy Spirit. No, it's every day. You have to clothe yourself with truth. You have to walk in truth. You have to be transparent. You have to be what God wants you to be, truthful, truthful. Because if it's not this way, the devil knows that you commit or you make use of his weapons, of lies. In the church, you are a truthful person. There, you have an environment where you are sober, it's a clean, pure environment, and you adjust well to that environment, the environment of light and truth. But when you get out of the church and you start to seek the easy way to you know, conquer things through lies, little lies or big lies, whether well, big or small lies are of the devil. These are weapons. Lies or a lie is a weapon. It's a 
It is what the devil uses to destroy human beings. If I walk with lies, obviously, I will be serving Satan. I will be a servant of Satan. I will be under the dominion of Satan. He can destroy me because I use lies. Now, if I serve God and I walk in truth, the devil will never prevail over my life. Therefore, dear friends, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, prepare yourself, cleanse yourself, deliver yourself from your lies. Start to mold yourself according to to the criteria of God, which is the truth. Yesterday, I was reading and meditating about the nature of Jesus as a human being, his humanity, what he experienced, what he felt, what he would do in order for us to how can I say, to have a reference to ourselves, what he felt, how he reacted before the challenges. And it's interesting, very interesting. Let me search for the text here, the text that I was reading about Jesus. When Jesus was born there, in chapter, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, let me find it here. Luke, let me see it. Chapter, it says here that Mary, the angel introduced himself to Mary and said to her something about the line, blessed are you. Let me find the text here. He said that, yes, that's it. Blessed are you. The angel said to Mary, blessed are you amongst women, for you have found favor with God. Hallelujah. You have found favor with God. This is this is too glorious. I can't find the verse here. Let me find it. What what the angel said to to Mary. This is very nice. You have found favor with God. The angel said, there you go. I found it now. It's here. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. What a wonderful text. When I read this here, I was so happy, so, so happy that I wanted to pass it on to you all. You who want to prepare yourself, you who want to get ready for the next pyjama prayer video, the video that will be done from your home. You participate in this video to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive Him. So you have to prepare yourself for that. So I read this text that the angel said. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Wow, this is phenomenal. Because God didn't send the Holy Spirit. He didn't choose Mary by chance. It wasn't as though she was being picked anyhow. No, he didn't just get her name or chose her somehow. No, God chose a woman 
who was truthful. A young lady who was fearing, she feared the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. A young lady who, despite of having already been committed, already she had, let's say she had already married in, in the registry, but she had not consumed her marriage yet. She hadn't had her honeymoon with Joseph yet, but they were already committed to one another. And this was already enough. When there was a promise, a vow of one person to the other, today we call it um, getting engaged. When we get engaged, we promise, we make vows. My parents went to Esther's parents' house to talk to, to them and ask permission for his son, their son, to marry their daughter. So when there is engagement, when there was an engagement, that was already, okay, that's it. It's, it they are committed to one another. It's, it's a marriage. Why? Because they had pledged their word, the word of truth. So Joseph, just as Mary, had already agreed. They had already married with the word, because the word in Israel, up until today, there is this Hebrew saying that goes like this in Hebrew, Mila Zemila, which means a word is a word. In Israel, today, if you say anything and you don't fulfill your word, and if there are witnesses that you said that, then that witness going before the judge, just the word, you don't have to have anything in writing, just the word that was pledged was or is already enough as a document. It will do as a document before the justice system in Israel. At least it's what I've heard about. So in those days, in biblical times, the word that had been pledged it was the person's honor. It was the truth. Mary had already committed herself to Joseph and vice versa. So in word, they were already married. That's why the text says that she was betrothed to Joseph, married to him, but they hadn't yet consumed their marriage. So I'd like you to know that Mary found favor with God because she was a young lady who was truthful, even though she was young, even though she was just a youth, she was pure, truthful, God-fearing. She walked in truth. She walked by the truth. For sure, she was a young lady who was separated from all the other young ladies at the time because she found favor before God. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Well, dear friends, this is the proposal that God has for you. You who want to be visited by the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have a new name. You will bring forth a new life. When we are chosen by God, we are born of God. He gives us a new name. Of course, this new name, we don't have it here on earth. We have it in heaven. It's there in heaven, recorded there. And this is written there in the book of Revelation. 
So when you, when the Holy Spirit descends upon you, it's because you were chosen. And why were you chosen? Because you showed fear towards God. Your mouth doesn't speak lies, deceit. You have a good character, a character that pleases God. You walk in the fear of the Lord. You observe the word of God and you follow the truth. So Mary found favor with God and therefore she was chosen to receive the Holy Spirit and in her womb the Son of God Jesus was conceived. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will you know this. You are chosen, chosen, so the Holy Spirit could descend upon you and place a new creation inside of you, become, for you to become a child of God, a child of God. A child of God cannot be touched by the devil anymore. The devil has no power over your life anymore. The devil can roar, he can send oh, every demon from hell. They may all come together against you, but they won't prevail. Why? Because you are of God, born of God. And so it happens with a person who is chosen by God. When you, dear friend, receive this new name, or when the Holy Spirit descends and involves you with his shadow, you will become a new person. You will indeed be truthful. And then, yes, you will bear with you. You will carry with you till the moment that you are promoted, the day that you sleep here on earth and wake up there in heaven, you will bear the image of God. You will carry the image of God, being truthful, being a person of character, of integrity, a person of the truth, that walks in truth, that lives in truth. You live off of the truth and by the truth. You will become a living witness of our Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. God will be sanctified. His name will be sanctified in your life. It's much more than you just going to a church, go to church and say hallelujah, praise God, glory be to God and sing. It's much more than that. Your life will exude the fragrance of Christ. The image that you will bear throughout this world is the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what happens when a person finds favor with God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, then we become new. However, in order for the Holy Spirit to come upon us, it's necessary that we are before God with favor, living as Mary the Virgin did, pure, super pure. She was super pure full of fear towards God. She walked in truth. And that's why Jesus said, if, if, if you remain in my word, indeed, indeed, you shall be my disciples. And you shall know the truth. What does it mean to know the truth? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. I always asked, whenever I read the text that Jesus said that the spirit of truth, he would give us the spirit of truth. I was thinking, why? Why not the spirit of the truth? No, it's the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth which is the Holy Spirit. When He comes, He comes upon those who are truthful. And you can be a truthful person, even before receiving the Holy Spirit. You can be, I can be a truthful person, as well as I can be a liar. It will depend 
on my decision. It will depend on my will. I want to be truthful, then I will be truthful. I want to be a liar, then I will be a liar. Everything will depend on me. Many people prefer, obviously, the majority prefer lies because lies shorten, opens a way for them, makes it easier for them to conquer. But not the truth. The truth hurts. It's painful. However, it makes us free. Only the truth makes us free. And then Jesus concludes, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mary was a free, delivered young woman because she walked in truth. And that's why God chose her in order to be the mother of his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's why when we make these purposes in the middle of the night to have these videos, this pyjama prayer video, it means that you can enter the presence of God even though you are far from the church. You can do so from your house, from your workplace, in your in public transport, anywhere that you are participating, but connected with God, as we are going to do, we are going to have a moment of faith. We are going to unite the truth. We are going to agree here on earth, all over the planet, all over the earth. We are going to be making this pyjama prayer vigil, united in one spirit, in one faith, in one heart, but no one will see us. We are going to be alone. 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 That's exactly what it is. When we are alone, then there is no one there for us to worry about, right? There is no one to see us praying, seeking. Isn't it true? As the Pharisees used to do, the Pharisees liked praying even in public places for them to be seen and be complimented by others. So this is a lie. This is of the devil. Pretense, hypocrisy are from the devil. So we are going to be alone. You will be alone. And everything that you are going to do for God that day, only he will see. Only he will be there to see what you are doing. And he shall come upon you. He will involve your being, your body. He will involve you. And there he will turn you into a new person. Then, yes, you will know what it means to be a Christian. A Christian indeed. Because in order for you to be a living witness of the Lord Jesus Christ who died... 2,000 years ago, you have to have His Spirit. And His Spirit comes upon you and turns you into a witness that He is alive, that God is not made of wood, clay, or metal. He is alive, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And therefore, He is not a God of those who are dead, but a God of the living. And you will become an instrument of His in this world in order to testify of his resurrection. Dear friends, prepare yourself. But in order for you to prepare yourself, you have to start with the truth. Deny your lies. Turn your back on your lies. I know, I know, oh Bishop, I will have to pay a high price to speak the truth. Well, Bishop, you are telling me to be truthful. I will lose my job. Well, what can I do? It's your decision. I'm not telling you to do it. I am preaching, teaching, guiding concerning the word. You are hearing the voice of God there where you are right now. It's up to you to decide between the truth and, and lies. Will you lose? For sure. In, uh, in the first moment, you will lose. 
but later on you gain when you receive the Holy Spirit. And then, dear friends, you you'll be unbeatable, invincible. The devil may roar, he may gather all the hosts of hell together, but they will not prevail against you because light always prevails over darkness. Even if the light is just a small match lit in the darkness, but darkness will get away. However small the light might be, if you are in, the, in truth, this light will be bright enough to dissipate darkness. So you can do it. You can deny truth. You can stop lying. You can start to be truthful. Truthful. Will you lose? Yes, you will. But what will you lose? You will lose what the devil is giving you. But he gives with one hand and takes away with two. You know that. Therefore, dear friends, it's up to you to decide which voice you will listen to. The voice of truth or the voice of lies. And there is the greatness of God. He is righteous. He is righteous. He chooses. He chooses people who find favor before him. It's exactly those who are truthful, whose character are like the character of the Virgin Mary. Yes, she was. Did you understand? Praise God. I believe that you understood. So let's do this. Let's prepare ourselves. You start working on yourself, getting rid of your lies, removing everything that is harmful to your faith, and start to walk in truth. Because by doing so, you will be prepared, ready for the following pyjama prayer vigil that we are going to have. I will tell you the day later on. And then you will receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? May God bless you all. And before I finish here, today especially, we are going to have a special service in church, in every universal church of the kingdom of God. If you want to start to walk in truth, then visit us today. Come. Come to participate in person of a service, especially in the evening. Today is Wednesday. So the meeting is for those who want to be ready. They want to prepare their soul to face lies with the truth. Praise God. May God bless you all. In the Temple of Solomon, the meeting is at 8 p.m., okay? And in every other temple of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, tonight you can participate of this special meeting. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.